I have just come from a three-hour public forum on the budget. So, do I look very tired? Yes, I am, after three hours. The budget was announced on 20th February. And if you follow what's going on in the news and online, what is the most talked about topic of the budget? Water, yes! In a post-budget forum organised by Rich, as you probably have read in the news yesterday, the most talked about topic was water. Why? Because the budget statement announced an increase of 30% in the price of water. Are you happy that the price of your water has gone up by 30%? No! Actually, it's not just 30%. If you read the PUB's detailed information, the increase is as much as 41% for domestic users. First, 40 cubic meter, 30% increase. Beyond that, 41%. As I was watching the budget delivery in Parliament live, I was waiting anxiously for the numbers to come out. What do you mean the numbers to come out? There were so many words saying we need to increase the price of water because this has gone up, that has gone up, so many things have gone up, so many reasons, but no figure as to what is the cost. Better still, there was no mention of what is the revenue. If there's no cost and no revenue, how do you justify a price increase, whether it's water or something else? Anyway, uh, I think two days later, the newspaper published a clarification. Oh, now the cost numbers come out. Uh, in 2000, it was 500 million, now it's double, blah, blah, blah. Many words, many figures, but all costs, no revenue. How do you justify a price increase when you just tell people the cost but there's no revenue? i give you an example. I sell chicken rice, so I tell you, hey, you know, I'm going to increase your chicken rice by $2 because my cost of baking chicken rice has gone up to $1.50. But, I don't tell you, after I increase the price, how much is my collection in a month? Whether at the end of the day, the revenue minus the cost, whether I still make a profit or not. Anyway, I went to the website of PUB and I looked at the annual reports. So here are the numbers. Last year, financial year 2015, profits of PUB, 168 million profits for the last seven years 1.1 billion PUB was founded in 1963 so one year 167 million profits seven years 1.1 billion profits last 53 years how much profits have they made if you add the interest to these profits what is the amount You know, there's been much debate and discussion about a mismatch of skills of Singaporean workers. They keep telling you that Singaporean workers don't have the right skills or the education or the experience for so many jobs. There are 50 over jobs, vacancies, but Singaporean skill mismatch. So, cannot. Singaporeans can't do these jobs. Why am I telling you this? There is a mismatch of skills in Parliament and there's a mismatch of skills in the PUB because you cannot answer a simple question to justify the increase of water price and you just show the cost. In fact, we have to wait two days for the cost. In Parliament, there was no cost. With no revenue, surely there's a mismatch. Maybe you need to find a foreigner to do this job. What else has gone up? Now, you won't see this in the budget delivery in Parliament. All you heard was, in order to help Singaporeans, we're going to increase your 
service and conservancy charge rebate by half a month. Very good news, my dear Singaporeans. You're getting an extra half month increase in your SNCC rebate. But three days before the budget delivery, they announced an increase in SNCC of 5 over percent to as much as 20 percent. This is what you call uh, give you a chicken wing. After that, take a drumstick back from you. Even the one room flat HDB have to pay over 5% increase in the SNCC. If you are staying in the executive apartment, it's as much as 20%. Now, why did this happen? Because, well, in recent years, so many leave breakdown, people die, people get injured. So they say, wow, we must spend more money on the leaves. So what do they do? They announce that all town councils must make an additional 14% of their SNCC contribution to the sinking fund of town councils. So if you 14% more must go to sinking fund for leave, they have to collect extra money for you. This will be increased in two stages, but by uh, now it's two, uh, by next year, right? They expect to collect about slightly over 100 million dollars because the SNCC increase. So very simple. Look at the numbers. You increase SNCC, you collect more than 100 million. You give half a month rebate. How much are you giving out? Surely it's much much less than 100 over million. You know what's the budget surplus this year? 5.2 billion. If you count the transfers to trust and endowment funds, which is like 3.6 billion, you're looking at a budget surplus of about 8.8 .8 billion. See, according to IMF fiscal reporting guidelines, you cannot count one time transfers like trust and endowment funds as an expenditure. Because you transfer 1 billion, you only use 3% of the 1 billion a year as expenditure. So you follow IMF reporting guidelines, the budget surplus, maybe it's 8.8 .8 billion. If you follow the entire IMF fiscal reporting guidelines, where many things that we charge off cannot be charged off, many things that we don't count should be counted, the cash budget surplus is probably about 20 billion again like in the previous year and the prior year for the cash budget surplus. So you have to ask yourself, we are in one of the worst economic downturns. The government has a 5.2 billion surplus, or have I explained to you, actually it's 8.8 .8 billion or 20 billion. And what did they do? They increase your water by 30% and they don't tell you how much more they will collect. But anyway, I just made some rough calculations. If last year they made profits of 167 million, and if the water price go up on the average, say 32%, because it's 30 to 40%, you multiply 167 million by 32%, what do you get? 220 million. So, simple estimate the profits from water may increase from 167 million a year to 220 million. That means 50 million more profits. So, what is the problem? You have 5.2 billion surplus and you want to take 50 million dollars from everybody. You have 5.2 or 8.8 .8 billion surplus, you want to take 100 million by increasing S and CC. When will this government stop its policy of always collecting more money? You know, every time we hear the same rhetoric. In order to address this undesirable behaviour, we must collect more money. Because if we don't collect more money, the undesirable behaviour will continue or increase. So, they tell you, we need to conserve water. So the only way to conserve water is to make you pay more. But you look at the history of Singapore. Every time they increase the price of water, they increase the tax on water, did consumption go down? No! Isn't it a better way, perhaps, to say if you reduce your consumption, I will give you money. 
instead of take money from you and increase your price, then maybe the consumption will go down. Let me cite you another example from the budget. Carbon tax is going to be introduced. So if you read the media the last few days, so many people are saying, oh, carbon tax go up, businesses pay more money, power generation companies especially pay more money. Will this be passed on in prices to consumers? Will your electricity go up? By the way, in the last few months, so many things went up. Your electricity go up, your childcare fees go up, your parking fee go up, and now your water go up, and your carbon tax may cause your electricity go up some more. Same problem. I want to reduce carbon emissions, undesirable behaviour. What do I do? I tax carbon tax. Then the companies pay more, they pass on the increase to you, you pay more for electricity. Makes sense or not? Don't make sense. So what are some possible things that they can do? Simple. You want to address carbon emissions, sure, you can increase the carbon tax. But after you collect the carbon tax, please give it back to the people by reducing the electricity charges. What happens when everything goes up? If you have a job, your pay has not been cut substantially, you are able to make ends meet, then you say, uh, what's the problem? Uh, pay $18 more for water, uh, $20 more for SNCC, what's the problem? The problem is, there are a lot of Singaporeans who are unemployed. In the budget statement, they say something along the lines of, oh, although economic downturn, jobs are difficult, blah, 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 the unemployment rate is still okay. It's 2.1%. But this 2.1% is the overall unemployment rate. It includes foreigners, it includes permanent residents, PRs. So, what is the unemployment rate for Singaporeans? According to the Ministry of Manpower, MOM, June last year, the non-seasonally adjusted unemployment rate for Singaporeans was 4.1%. You see, 2.1 and 4.1 is almost double the difference. On a non-seasonally adjusted basis in June last year, there were 92,300 unemployed Singaporeans. In the last six months, the economy has gotten worse. You read so much news about redundancies, retrenchments, unfair termination for performance or what have you. If in June, the unemployment rate for citizens, non seasonally adjusted was 4.1%, what is the rate now? End December 2016. Surely it must be more than 4.1. You see around 4.5? 92,300 unemployed, June. What is the number now? More than 100,000? So for all these people who are really struggling to make ends meet, you still want to increase water, increase SNCC, increase so many things? You know the funny thing is, sometimes when you read the newspaper, there are two apparently unconnected news, but after you read it, you realise the connection. Actually, I didn't realise it. But one of my friends told me, Hey, Long Zian, you know the same day of the news on the increase or the day after, well, there was this news, you know, so many people caught cheating on the Skill Future Credit. 4,400 people caught cheating. Say enroll for the course, actually never enroll one. Just to collect the money, right? And before that, every month they catch about 80. Ah, these are the people they caught using the data analytics program. What about all the people that have not been caught yet? How many people have been cheating? But you know what's the issue like my friends say? Eh? Wow, these so many people are so desperate, so cash trapped, so dead broke, that they will take the risk of going to jail for one year, being fined $10,000, just to cheat skill future credit to get that miserable $500. Ah. So many people must be very, very poor. I agree with my friend. Would you take the risk of going to jail for one year and be fined 10000 just to cheat for $5? Most of you say, no, right? But if you are like the 100,000 Singaporeans or residents whose monthly income after deducting employee CPF is less than 
$1,000. Wouldn't you be desperate enough to risk going to jail and be fined just to get the $500? The biggest problem with this budget is that something happened which in my view is not good for poorer people. It only helps richer people, but nobody is talking about it. The increase in housing grants for resale flats, everybody say very good. Government give you more money to buy resale flat. What is the problem? I tell you what's the problem. You are using taxpayers' money to give to people who can afford resale flats. If you are low income, you can't even afford a resale flat in the first place. You have to buy a BTO flat. So you are helping the richer people to buy resale flats. What is even worse, when you sell your resale flat, if you are like most ordinary Singaporeans, not very rich one, when you sell your HDB flat resale, what do you do? You buy another HDB flat, subsidized flat, and you have to pay a resale levy. So the grant is not free, but it is unfair, it is not equitable because the richer people, after they sell the resale flat, they can afford to buy a private property and they don't have to pay a resale levy. What does that mean? Government using taxpayer money to give to richer people to buy resale flats and richer people to buy private property when they sell the resale flats and don't have to pay resale levy. You ask the HDB, how many people will buy resale after that actually buy private property versus those who need to buy a subsidized HDB flat? Most of them, lower income, ordinary income Singaporeans who have to buy HDB flat. So you are... Well, subsidizing the rich, you are robbing from the poor to help the rich. The biggest problem of this budget, in my view, is that like every budget in the past, our fiscal policy remains the same. From a cash flow perspective, the government is still the only country in the world that is not sending a single cent on healthcare or CPF or HDB. What do I mean by from a cash flow perspective, not spending a single cent? Let's look at healthcare. Every year, your MediSafe contribution plus the interest on your MediSafe account balances is more than total government spending plus your total MediSafe redrawals for medical expenses and premiums. So if you look at the cash flows, government collect more every year than what is paying out. So government not spending a single cent on healthcare, although the budget statement says that healthcare spending has increased to 10 billion. CPF, government is not spending a single cent on CPF. Why? It's your money. Right? The contributions to CPF every year exceed the withdrawals from CPF. So government has a net positive cash flow. On top of that, we are probably the only government in the world that keeps so much of your pension returns to itself. Your CPF ordinary account rate of 2.5% is probably the lowest real rate of return of all national pension funds in the world since 1999. There's no government in the world that keeps so much of the pension returns of the people to itself. We estimate that since the CPF scheme started, the difference in the pension returns kept by the government is more than $200 billion. And going forward, it may be another few hundred billion dollars. Why do you think so many Singaporeans, when they retire, they don't have enough money? Because the pension interest and the pension return is so low. And finally, HDB. Why is the government not spending a single cent on HDB? Because... If you know the breakdown of the price of BTO flats, how much of it is going to construction of the flats? How much of it is going to land cost of the flat? Nobody knows. For years, people ask in the forum pages, people ask in parliament, can you break down the price of HDB flat BTO for us? Silence. But 
So recently, a year or two ago, we finally had an answer in, in Parliament. The answer is quite revealing. The answer was land cost of HDB BTO flats are charged at market prices. So from there, we can estimate about 60% of the price that you pay for your HDB flat goes to land cost. The government tell you that the more flats they sell, the more money they lose because flats are subsidised. How do they explain this? Oh, you buy resale flat, you must pay 400000 I sell you BTO 200000 so I subsidise you 200000 I lose 200000 But don't forget, if you track the cash flows, government simply collect the money and pass the land cost to the Singapore Land Authority. What was the cost of the land that the government obtained to build a HDB flat? For example, if your land was acquired under the Land Acquisition Act for a few dollars, then now they mark it up to market, then they sell it to you. Is the HDB losing money? Of course not. Thank you.